Let's see if that worked. Okay. Oh, my phone just did something real weird. Okay, hello. Well, hello. This is Nicole with Cowgirls and Spurs coming to you live on Tuesday. <laughs> and I'm just gonna get myself organized here because I'm extra tired today. How are you? Okay. So I have a viewer request, Miss Dana requested that I do this tutorial and I have been trying to figure it out and I thought I would do a two part tutorial with you. I'm going to do a show you how to do it and then we're going to spend a couple days doing the project and then Friday I'm going to bring to you what I'm going to do with the project. Does that make sense? So we're going to do a two part tutorial on this because it's a a beautiful tutorial it's an awesome suggestion it's complicated it takes time takes um, patience and I want to do several of these so that I can incorporate them in the part two craft so and if you're gonna do this along with me you're gonna need some time to get these going too because they're not easy to do I mean they're easy to do in a time-consuming takes all your focus you have to be patient get it done kind of craft it's not one of those that you could just throw together and wing it um, for this particular craft. So hello, as you're popping on, this is Nicole with Cowgirls and Spurs. I'm kind of getting my mindset ready and I'm going over the things that I'm gonna be showing you today on this one of two part tutorial. We're gonna be making fabric feathers and this is um, one of our viewers requests, Miss Dana, when she pops on, I'm gonna say hi. She thought this would be a great tutorial for me to do, and so I did a little bit of research, and I tried a couple of them because my daughter's growing out of her jeans, and they're kind of dirty, and they have tears in them, and I thought, what better way and opportunity than to reuse the jeans? Okay, my disclaimer for this evening is I'm trying to leave my sliding glass door open so that Emma and Luca could come and go and not interrupt. If they get too barky and tear out of here, then I'm in trouble, but... Um, Hopefully they'll just settle with the door being open and then being able to come and go and not bother me too much. But keeping it real, I may end up over there somewhere if they knock me over. So we'll see how this works out. How's everybody doing today? So it's in the four-ish range. Um, we started volleyball this week, so I'm having um, some scheduling challenges and I'm trying to incorporate feeding with pickup volleyball practice, some of the other or obligations that I have as far as volunteering and taking care of some friends' animals, and I'm trying to incorporate it all, and I really want to get on here and craft with you guys and, and, and spread this positivity that we're trying to spread, and here I am. Okay, so we're going to do this fun, complicated craft. Part one of part of two part series, you're gonna need a couple things. You're gonna need some old jeans. These are my daughter's cute little jeans that, I don't know what she did. It's almost like she got sprayed with something that stained it, but she won't wear them anymore because of the stain. And I won't be able to see the stain with my craft, so I'm cutting open my daughter's jeans. And she just had a growth spurt, so I've got a couple pairs to work with. This is one of the legs we're gonna be doing, and that isn't a light wash. Another one that we're doing is I have several tones here, but it's a darker wash. Any jeans will work. It doesn't matter. You just need the jeans. So thrift store, go buy some jeans. The other thing, let me put my glasses on and see if I can see you all better. Oh my gosh, you're like a blur. I was a blur. Oh, that's so much better. I need to just accept that I need glasses and just accept that I need glasses. Okay, we're still working off that same jute twine that I've been using in all my tutorials. So here we are with the same jute twine. Are you leaving? Yep. Right in the middle of my life. Okay. Yep. My Hi daughter's guys. coming and going. <laughs> so um, you're going to need, oh, let me reach over. Also, can you hand me that green one right there, that fabric? I put it right out of my reach and I didn't mean to. You're going to need an iron and you're going to need, um, I'm trying. Let me show you what I'm trying. You're going to, you're going to want to get, if you don't have it, fabric that looks like it will fray nicely. Okay. So let's just start with that. The jeans fray decent, they're not easy to fray. Then you have fabrics like this. See how it's all, oh, there's my girl, I love you. All right, see you later, I'll call you with questions. Okay, so she's gonna get out of here and the dogs are gonna go nuts out. Oh, the door's open. And the little one's in? 
Yeah, but I don't want the big ones out. We have runners. Sorry, that got complicated. I didn't mean to inter get interrupted. Okay, you're gonna need fabric that will fray. This fabric will fray. I'm gonna shut this. Come on, come on in. Luca, come. Okay, not gonna happen. Okay, so there's one fabric that I'm using. Isn't this beautiful? So I had this obsession a couple years ago where um, I was obsessed with accumulating fabric. Now, if you've been following Cowgirls and Spurs, you know me, Nicole, though I'm the only one here that does these videos, so it's me and one and the same, does not sew. I don't sew. I don't know how to sew. My mom's a really good sewer. Hey, Kathy, how are you from Illinois? Welcome, welcome. Um, I just don't sew. I don't know how to sew. I can mend. I can mend like Cinderella, but I cannot sew. So why I started accumulating fabrics um, is beyond me at this point. But the fact that I did is now benefiting me. So woo woo, talk about a little bit of a delayed. Okay, so this is a beautiful fabric. I was thinking these are the colors of spring. So this is a fabric that I found that it had string sticking out of it when it was in my pile and I went, oh, that phrase nicely. So I chose it. Same thing with this one, again, I just love this fabric. Isn't that gorgeous? And it looked like it would fray because there was all kinds of shreds on it. And so I grabbed it. So we're gonna make some feathers. Um, so that's my biggest suggestion. Beyond that, we're gonna wing this together. We're gonna be making, let me show you what we're gonna be making. Um, so these two I have almost finished. So these are the two that I made. Can you see, this was just that fabric that I cut in the shape. Good morning, hello. Oh, well, good evening, Nancy from Indiana. Welcome. Um, I haven't seen you guys in a while. All right, so now my, so I've been having technical difficulties and I've been trying to work around it. I'm also having canine difficulties and I'm trying to work around that too. So um, let's see how it rolls. I might get a little distracted because they think that it's the super dog highway underneath my ironing board. So aren't those gorgeous? Okay, look, look at the two sides. This, let me show you guys, this has been blowing me away. I've never done this before. So look at this, you guys. Hey, Tina, how are you? Okay, this is the fabric on this side, and this is the fabric on this side. And this fabric made that feather. Does that just blow you away? It blew me away, because I don't realize the intricacies of woven fabric. So this one's halfway done. I still have to finish fraying this side and I wanted to show you how to do it. So I left half of it undone, but that's this fabric. Can you believe that? It just blows me away. And then here are the jean ones we're gonna be doing. These are the ones made out of jeans. We're gonna make all kinds of feathers. So I'm gonna show you how to do it. And then part one is I'm gonna show you how to make the, hey Melanie, hey Jonalyn, hey Linda, nice to see you guys. So. We're gonna, I'm gonna, okay, so part one, this is why I told you this is gonna be a two-part tutorial because these are not quick feathers. This took me probably 45 minutes, another 45 minutes. I ended up watching two episodes of The Bachelor to make this one, so, you know, thank you. Thank you for the fabric, I love it. I'm glad you love this and it's turning out very interesting. I've never done this, I didn't know how it would turn out. I just know that Dana wanted me to try it and I thought it was a great idea and I thought I could do it. So let's get started. There's a couple steps that I'm learning as I go. You're gonna need a glue gun. You're gonna need the jute. Do you wanna go outside too and be a big dog? Okay, all right. Okay, nosy Nelly over there, my Emma girl. She's so nosy. She's gotta be in the middle of everything. Okay, put this, let me clear off a little bit. I'm working with my ironing board right here in front of my fireplace. I kind of really got in your, I got really excited and got right in your face. So let me, let me move this back a little bit because I was trying to navigate the dogs. So, hey Lisa, how are you? Okay, so let me make some room because this is, I step staged it so you could see what I was doing. You're gonna need a fine tooth comb. You know what, you don't laugh at me, but seriously, I couldn't find a fine tooth comb to save my life. And I spent the first tutorial doing, um, oh, she's ridiculous, uh, with a fork. I felt like Ariel from The Little Mermaid. <sighs> roll with it, just roll with it. 
So then I started digging through all the drawers and I kid you not, I found an attachment to the grooming tool for my dogs and it's got, it's a comb essentially. And so I started using this and you guys, it was a game changer. So please don't laugh at me. You know, I like to use what I have around the house. I, I mean, if I can't, if I don't need to buy it, I'm going to use what I have and I'm going to be kind of, I'm going to MacGyver everything. I MacGyver everything. Just know that about me. It'll be something you'll, you'll probably think to yourself, I could do that way better. I don't know what she's doing. Well, you know what? You know what I'm doing? I'm MacGyvering it. That's what I'm doing. Using what I have and making this up as I go because that's how I have the most fun. So make sure you heart me. My mama's on. Say hi to mama. And um, that's my comb. So there you go. I'm, you're going to need one of these. Okay, so let me put my little thing there. Okay, let's start with, let me see what I want to start with because this, this is a stretchy jean and it really um, gave me a lot of trouble. Okay, so see how this is stretchy material? This one didn't work as well. What, what am I making tonight, Kelly? This is what we're making, darling. Everybody let me know when, okay, if I don't see her on or her name comes up, Dana Templeton Anderton, if you come on, you make sure we all know it because I'm doing this tutorial because you suggested it and it's such a fabulous thing to suggest too. Hey Barbie, we are making fabric feathers. This is part one. I'm going to teach you how to make the feathers and then your homework is make feathers in your style and your colors um, and then Friday we're putting them together in a project. Okay, so it's a two part. One is gonna be the making the foundation and then part two is gonna be putting the foundation in a craft. Okay, so make sure you guys look out for Dana because she's the one that suggested this and I just threw my glue gun across the room because I was dancing. It's a dancing flying glue gun. And I've got the dog highway underneath the, so everybody who's just popping on, hello honey, everybody that is just popping on, I've got dog highway underneath the ironing board I want you to keep it real. I've got the moose down here behind me, which is how I broke my leg two years ago, tripping over a dog behind me, so don't let me step back. And um, the call of the wild happening down below because they want to be fed early, so just bear with me. Okay, here we go. Now, I'm gonna start with, I'm gonna start with the easy one because it's the easiest one. This is my daughter's pair of jeans. She just grew out of it. I want to use the seam as the center vein of my feather, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay it flat. In my Sorry about that. Dang it. Okay, not that techie. Got a phone call. I hit decline and the whole thing was right in front of me. I hope you didn't miss too much. Okay, so I'm going to cut what I think a feather would look like. So basically it's a heart kind of like a point coming up into a heart, but without that curvature into the widow's peak of the heart, okay? So let me just show you. Can you guys see me okay? All I'm doing is kind of creating this feather, and I'm just carrying it up. The scene is my backbone. It'll probably be bigger than I want it to be, but right now I just want to get it cut out. See that? That could be kind of what a feather would look like, okay? So, can you see it? Okay. So we're gonna start with this one. Now, <clears throat> I have a seam in the middle. Remind, remember, this was on the leg. I wanna flatten this seam out. So I'm gonna hot glue it so that I'm gonna iron it first and then I'm gonna... Okay. So take your iron, which is already hot, and just kinda iron it down. Okay. Okay. This is not very hot. Um, make sure your iron is hot and plugged in when you need it, especially during a live tutorial. Okay. So. Clearly, I don't iron either. Okay. Shh. It was just me. It was me and the iron. We got into an argument and the iron won. Okay, 
I'm gonna glue down my pieces because I'm gonna need to glue it anyway, you guys. And apparently I don't know how to turn on my iron. I'm gonna have a lot of disclaimers because I don't iron either. Sorry, I'm not domestic at all. I mean, I'm domestic in a lot of ways. Ironing, sewing, it's not it. I cook, I craft, what else? I can do a mean batch of laundry, but you know, this isn't, those aren't my fortes. Okay, so this is what you want. It doesn't matter if you need to glue it down, iron it, doesn't matter. It does not matter, okay? That's it, we just wanted to lay those seams flat, okay? So, I have to tell you that, you guys, thank you for just kind of encouraging me through my dog fiasco. I have to just, oh, thank you for loving my necklaces. This is the theme today, I thought I'd be in theme. Do you, you don't even know my anxiety level goes from like, okay, I got this to, oh my gosh, I don't have this at all. They're gonna, they're gonna hate me because of crazy town over here. Thank you for kind of supporting me through it. I know a lot of these videos, I get your support. You guys, it's okay, we have dogs, you know, that kind of thing, and I appreciate it so much because I'm, today I posted a picture of um, my husband and I talked and I'm taking over the cottage. We're gonna move things around because we're all packed up and ready to go because I have no place I can craft. I feel I craft and then I have to clean up, craft and clean up, craft and clean up. And it's just making me a little nuts. It's too much with all the showings and stuff. So I really need your prayers over the cottage because it's, it's a monumental task and I'm by myself to do it. And so um, I just need some prayers that I don't make myself nuts. Okay, woo woo. All right, here we go. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take you're gonna take your jute and you're gonna put the, the end of it at the tip of the feather because you're creating the vein, okay? So we're gonna fray everything up to the vein of the feather. So like that is what you're gonna do to glue it, okay? So just do a dollop of glue, keep it as narrow as possible. And then make sure you didn't just glue your feather to your ironing board that you never use. So just in case somebody who may or may not want to use it in the future, they're not glue going to iron their clothing over hot glue. Could be bad. That's all I'm saying. I'm going to move my cutting board over here so that I have some purchase. <laughs> That's all I got. That's all I have today. Okay, that's it. See? See that? Okay. And see how it twirls? Can you see it? I love the dogs. I have two dogs always in my way. Go, got yeah, I do. I love them. Um, so Emma's about 125 pounds. She's that Alaskan Malamute German Shepherd that I had told you about. Luca is a Boxer Rhodesian Ridgeback mix. And I don't know if you know anything about those breeds, but the lights are on and no one's really home. So he's just precious. He's precious and we love him. Okay, and then I'm gonna do one more and then we're gonna get to fraying. Okay, let me do one more. I might wanna mix the material on this one. So, okay, start making some comments because I wanna see what you think here. Should I mix the dark with this one or with this one? Okay, so here's this. Now, if you recall on this one, it comes out like this, because I have something to show you about this material that is just off the charts bizarre. That kind of goes good together. Or this one, I think that one's beautiful as well. This one's harder to do. And this is why I said, um, you have five dogs, never know when they'll bark. They always wait till I get on live to bark. That's, it. hey Carol, they um, they always wait till I get online to bark. It is, it, it's like so quiet in here until Muck and Sluck over here decide to join the party that I didn't know I was having. Okay, I think I'm going to do this one only because it's easier to fray and I wanna show you how I did it. So let me see where I already did the cut because that fray was interesting right here and I wanna try something a little bit different. I think I frayed it this way and I think I wanna fray it this way today. Okay, so you're gonna fold, let me get my glue gun out of the way. You're I, you guys, I haven't had a good night's sleep in two days, so forgive my frazzle, this one. Okay, this is the one I'm gonna do because the way it frayed, it was something very interesting. I 
it fabric fascinates me. Like I said, I've never, I don't sew. I just don't sew. Okay, can you see how I'm folding this? All I'm doing is folding it one direction. You can pick the direction you want it to be in based on however you end up folding it. But I feel like, are you going out? If you go out, I'm shutting the door. Go, go, go on. Maggie. Okay, I have a runner. She's out. I got to keep an eye on her. I got to keep an eye on her. So if I seem distracted, it's not because I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing. It's just my five pound Morky who's been ill and sick. Um, she hasn't quite gotten her strength back. Come on side, honey. And um, she thinks she's a she thinks she's a ranch dog. She doesn't have any self-preservation sense. So she just takes off. We'll find her roaming the bottom half of the ranch and then she comes back and sleeps for two days. And it's, we just can't have, I don't want that for her. So I'm going to actually close this because Luke is doing his rounds. Okay, <clears throat> again, I folded it in half like this. And I'm just going to kind of come into what I think a feather would look like. And I'm going to cut them in various lengths. And that's it. There we go. That's how I cut it. It was kind of like a heart. It started at a... It started at sort of a point here, and then I just came in and cut it off. So it looks kind of like a feather. Now, once I fray it, I can shape it after I frayed it. So now I wanna put the vein in. And so all I'm gonna do is take my glue gun. So you can, can you see how this isn't terribly complicated? You know, the hardest part, honestly, is figuring out the fraying and how to separate the threads. Okay, so I'm gonna attach it to this one and I wanna cut it. So I'm using the other end of the string to attach as the vein on this one, okay? You see that? So they're attached by a string because they're gonna hang like this on the project that I have intention for on Friday, okay? And then we just created the vein in the back and there's the front. And you want it to be sealed because when we start fraying, it's gonna fray up to that glue line and it'll stop fraying at the, group, the glue line. So everything here will be frayed, but you'll have a center like this. And I'll show you. Here's the one I did for the jean. It has this center. See, I got a little thicker on the glue on that one. It's almost good that I did because this one was a little thinner using the seam. And see how it frayed? So that's where your iron's gonna come in. We did a price reduction today and my realtor's call, realtor's calling and so Okay, I'm sorry. I don't know. I thought I silenced everything. So Okay. Do you see? Now I'm just going to start picking at it. See that? I'm just going to start picking at it. And what I want the I want the fabric to do is this. Okay, it just gets kind of frustrating. You just start pulling it. You pull it this way, you pull it this way, and you fray. And so what you need to do is just have some patience. And it'll start to fray. Okay, so like see how I'm just pulling string out? and I'm getting that frayed look. Okay, so you just keep doing it, keep doing it all the way to the seam. Let me show you, I'm gonna kind of move on because this is where I'm gonna send you on your homework and then Friday on the tutorial, we're gonna reconvene with all of the feathers that we've created and create a project for spring, okay? And so now this one, there's not much more to this. There's, I mean, I can sit and walk you through every different type of fabric, but you have to kind of feel it out on your own. I wanna show you on this one, I'm gonna come really close. Can you see that this, it's going this direction right here and that these little gold threads are the ones that are coming up? Okay, so I had a hard time separating them to get the, the ones I wanted out. I want the ones that are going in this direction, these threads. I, these are the little ones that I need to pull out. And so I have to one by one pull them out. And you have to kind of hold down here because it gathers as you're pulling them out. And this is where the patience, the time consuming comes in, the prayer, worship. I have been worshiping 
all day. I've been, I've been just pray. I don't know, music on all day singing. I was by myself. It was a chance for me to kind of rest because I didn't sleep well. So that's what I do. That's what I've told you. I, I pray while I'm crafting. And so it kind of, and you know, I work out a lot of stuff that I'm, you know, going on in my life. You just spend that time just kind of processing it. Nobody is here nitpicking or needing your attention. And you just spend some time just kind of settling up, just clearing out the head. And I come up with a lot of my crafting ideas, all kinds of stuff. So this is it. It's time consuming. That's why I said I got through two episodes of The Bachelor doing this because I, I equate it to when you get one of your necklaces all bunched up in a knot and then you sit at the table with your glasses on and a flashlight and a light and you just sit there and pick at the chain until the knot comes undone. That's what you're doing with these. So as you keep at it and you keep pulling the little strings out, making sure that the ones that are going in the opposite direction, do you guys get what I'm saying? It's kind of like you have to get your hands on it, okay? But what I want you to do is I want you to make seven pairs before Friday. So two of seven of these pairs, because we're gonna do an odd number, okay? So you want seven feathers. Let me show you this one real quick that we just made because this right here, started separating. Do you see how this, this fabric, front and back, has two different fabrics fused together and they're completely different unweaving. Yes, thank you. Um, one of them has a string like this, which looks like a twine that you would wrap your turkey in at Thanksgiving with the legs and stuff. Can you see that? And this is a thread on the other one. And the thread on the other one just pulled right out, but I had to literally go through here and pull each string out to fray it. Fascinating fabric, fascinating. And so that's what I did. I just started picking out the different layers and I just started pulling out the colors that I didn't want to be there and I just pulled them out and threw them on my pile. Tearing it apart, just tearing it apart, unraveling it, exactly what my mom said, unraveling it, unraveling, unraveling, and you start to get that fray. Okay, so same thing with the jeans. You're just gonna kind of come around this edge and start trying to separate it. And then you just start pulling the outer ones out as they'll come out and just start pulling them so that it frays. Sometimes I had to cut it, sometimes I had to come in here and then just start pulling them off. They'll Once they start giving away, they'll start giving away. I mean, I could be here forever, it's like, so satisfying, okay? Let me show you over here. So now this is where I came in, very messy. Mary, it's a messy project too, but that's, it's not messy like paint. It's just, you know, the sticky threads get everywhere and then you start getting tangled. All right, so let me try and clean this up a little bit. I hope you like this. I hope you really, really like this because it's gonna be quite beautiful when we're done. I hope you know too that with my projects, you kind of never know where I'm going. Um, and then I come up with something, you know, surprising and it, it ends up being, I think they're coming out really pretty and I feel blessed to have some inspiration there. So the jean material, I got to say is harder to work with because it tangles. If you see that it kind of mats up and that's where this comb comes in. I mean, I don't know why my iron isn't turning on really. That's not it. I wouldn't be able to, I wouldn't even be able to tell you if I had it on correctly. Okay, well, the iron's not working. So what you would do is brush it so that the cross threads, okay, so you only want the, in this case, you only want the horizontal threads. threads. You don't want the vertical threads. And the vertical threads are gonna keep it matted until you work out all the ones that you wanna work out. And so that's where this cute little comb comes from is see how that's starting to come out? Okay, well that's what I want. I want all these little stragglers to come out. And so I'm kind of brushing it. I don't know if you can see this. Brushing it to kind of get the mats out. And then what I would do is I would come in with the iron that was actually working and you knew how to operate. And I would lay down my threads. I would even go as far as say fabric stiffener, watered down glue could keep these feathers 
kind of laying flat. Let me see if I can kind of show you how it flattened out like that. Cause it's really beautiful when it's flattened out as opposed to when it's kind of matty. But if you want them spinning, then you want the fabric to be able to move like a feather would. So this one frayed a little too much. I'm pretty sure this one needs to be ironed. It, but So try it, okay? But I think what we're gonna be doing Friday is gonna be incorporating all of these together. So I'm gonna say seven pairs, okay? So play with your fabrics, see what frays nicely, choose your color palette, and then put together your feather strands. You're gonna need seven strands for Friday's project if you wanna do this project and follow along. And this is part one. So part two will be actually creating, um, I'm gonna be creating this for my daughter's new bedroom. So it's gonna be a wall hanging, but it'll be beautiful. So that's what we're gonna be doing, okay? So stay tuned for Friday. Listen. All right, so I'm gonna go blurry for a second because I can't really see myself without my glasses. It's gonna be blurry. I feel like this has been a heavy week for a lot of people that I'm coming in contact with. A lot of my friends, it's a, it's a good week. Everybody seems to be really full of joy and happy, but life is happening to them. And, you know, they need to draw on faith or draw on encouragement a lot more than I feel normal. So just keep people in your prayers, that's all. Just keep them in your prayers, be thinking about other people, heading into your stash of material. You go girl, I wanna see some of that material because that's what I did. I headed into my stash and I came up with some fun stuff. So <clears throat> anyway, getting back to that, just um, be aware of the people around you. Just because they look put together may not be the, mean that they don't need a hug or some words of encouragement or if they're believers, tell them about God. Tell them God loves them. Tell them, encourage them in that. Encourage them in faith and prayer and pray with them. Um, don't miss an opportunity, okay? That's all. I just, I see there's a lot of people around that are just trying to be positive and they need encouragement too. So that's all I have for today. I will see you tomorrow. We're gonna be doing, <clears throat> hey Denny, how are you? Um, I hope you can go back and watch the replay. Let me know, do your comments. I'm working out my technical issues. My sweet friend from Tennessee just popped on I, and I haven't been able to communicate with her because of my internet. I'm all working off of my phone. Everything's off of my phone. And so I'm working it out, working it out and I'm gonna overcome it because technology will not take me out, okay? So I will see you all tomorrow. Have a good night, enjoy your feather making. Don't get too frustrated, just be patient, know it's a process and in the end result, you're gonna be so thrilled with all the hard work. Um, so there's that, all right you guys, have a good evening. I'm jumping into feeding and kid mode and as always, choose to be joyful and I'll see you tomorrow night, okay? Bye.